more engaging, more fun. And from my experience, the best groups are male, female. It somehow work really well together. Uh, I'll make a massive generalization here, so I'm warning you adva in advance. But from my experience, uh, guys sometimes don't want to work in pairs. Maybe then they don't like to admit that they don't know something. Maybe it would hurt their ego or something like that. And women tend to be a lot more cooperative and help each other. So always when a new class forms at the start of the semester and you see two uh, women sit next to each other, they immediately start helping each other. And, and that's really great, actually. Because for me, the ultimate goal in my teaching is not actually the content, but it's supporting this teamwork and helping each other and creating this uh, friendly atmosphere where, where it's okay to say you don't know something, where it's okay to ask for help, where no one will uh, laugh at you or think you're stupid. So th these, are, these are my ultimate goals. And if you are, are a teacher or manager at a company or lead somehow a team, it's, it's really a good question to think about your own values. Like what do you want to... Uh, like, like uh, what do you want to, your team to learn? And I want my students to, to learn this ultimately. <clears throat> I always keep my students active in the class. Uh, when they get to know each other, I have to stress that I always learn my students' names, and they learn their names among each other immediately the first day, and we practice the names always every, every day in, uh, in, of the class, of the semester. And it takes some time, but if you, if you do this, these team building activities, then the people trust each other more, and they can play together. So if you know someone, it's not embarrassing to play with him or her. So, for example, when they program sorting algorithms, uh, I use, I give them these cards with numbers, and they have to play, and they are variables, and they have to sort themselves using the algorithm they are programming. And this makes them think about all the steps in a really engaging way. And I, also, uh, I also use other activities like challenges or contests, quizzes, uh, or Python jokes, which can be understood only if you are prepared for the lesson. And I, I recently read an interview with a rector from the Charles University in Prague, who complained that the students are lazy and passive. And I mean, come on. I've taught around a hundred of students in my programming classes, another hundred in other, in other courses, and I wouldn't call any one of them passive or, or lazy. So maybe the, the cause is that students in school are often forced to sit down for very long periods of time and write down notes and learn from 200 slides all the, in, all the information in the lectures. And, but if you, if you engage students and make them actually do something, they are not uh, I wouldn't say that they are lazy or passive. And I think this uh, teaching programming offers great choice of activities you can use to make people actually do something practical, which is, which is really, what's really great about teaching programming. And this active way of learning is for me really the way to make learning great, and it's, it's the way to go. Uh, I receive very positive feedback from my students, and I want to keep doing my best further on. Teaching programming is challenging. It's a lot more difficult than I thought when I, thought when I started. But it's when you see students succeed, or when they have this aha moment when they figure something out and then they are able to, to program it, then it's a beautiful feeling to witness something like that. And it's, it's really what, what I really enjoy about, about teaching, probably the most. Oh, okay, another question is, uh, do you have experience with coding dojo? 
Oh uh, no, actually I don't. Yeah, it's um, well, we we had a workshop last year, so maybe it's it's like uh, maybe it's uh, applicable for for Chinese. And and we have another uh, question: What is the age of students? Uh, does age affect process and progress? Uh, I teach usually first year university students, so around 19, plus or minus, even plus. Uh, I would say that when you teach really small kids uh, or elementary students, uh, elementary school kids, uh, you have to use different approaches than you would use with, with adults. So adults usually go to university, want to then work in IT, so you have to design the course in a way that will be applicable somehow in practice later. And yeah, so uh, with the younger students, I would say you have to go more slowly and choose different problems uh, than you can, uh, than you would use with adults. But in uh, some ways, uh, it's said that kids learn some ways a lot faster, but it has to be appropriate for, for their age. So age definitely depends. Did I answer did I answer your question, who, whoever asked you? I think so, probably. Okay, uh, okay uh, it was uh, last the last question, so thank you very much for your talk. And thank uh, you. We'll have a small break. Thank, thank you. you. <coughs>